Welcome to lecture 53, Constructors. So, so far we've created a class and then we've created instances of that class. So we have three students right here. Our actual student class is the blueprint behind the scenes. So I briefly mentioned this concept of constructors in the last lecture when we were creating our first student. I mentioned that this call right here was a call to a constructor. So what does that mean? A constructor is a method. It is a special type of method. So when I say that a constructor is a method, the first thing that comes to your mind should be that it's some type of action because methods or functions are some type of action. So a constructor is a special type of action or function. The job of the constructor is to prepare this instance of this class to be ready. It, it basically forces you to enter in the required information to use this class. The same thing works with when I build a function, the parameters are the required information that you need to supply the function in order to use it. So you can't use an adding function without giving it numbers because it requires those numbers in the parameter list. So the constructor is basically the parameters for the entire class. It says you need to supply me this information in order to use this class. If you don't give me this information, you can't use my class. That, so the constructor is the, basically the parameters to the class. So in this example right now, what would be the information that is required for the class? That information would be the name, the age, and the final grade. For every student, there must be a name, age, and final grade. But in this setup right now, what would stop me from just going like this and removing the age? Nothing says to me, oh, now student isn't working anymore because you didn't give it an age. When you manually allow people to access the data directly, you can't put any control over it. I can't force the user to enter in a name because it's just a variable and anyone has access to it. So this setup does not allow that. But I know as the designer of the class that every student must have a name, age, and final grade. So I need to force them to give me a name, age, and final grade every single time they create this class. So how do we create the constructor? Because the constructor's job is to do that, basically. So like I said, the constructor is a special type of function. And the reason why I call it special is because of two things. The first is the constructor has no return type. And the second is the name of the, the special function is always the name of the class. So let's go ahead and actually create the constructor. To do that, like I said, it's a special type of function, so I'm going to start off by giving it the access modifier. Now, the constructor requires the access modifier to be public because the job of the constructor is to restrict and reinforce the information to come into the class. So it means it must be public. It has to be seen by things outside of the class. So I want to say public and then the name of the class. That's the syntax of a constructor. So I'm going to say student. Now, in its parameter list, that is where I put the required information for the class. So my class always needs a name, age, and final grade. So I'm going to say string name int age and double final grade. Those are the three components I need to use this class. OK, so we're making some progress. So now that we built this infrastructure that allows users to send in data to this class through the constructor's public um, constructor call. So because this is public, this is the way that the user will give me the information. Now, because th that this is public, there's no need for these to be public anymore. Because if the user can give me the information through the constructor call, why do I need to give them access to this? And we're, like I said, we're going to talk about this a lot more. But let's make these private. I want to protect my data. I'm going to make these private. I only want the users to be able to give me the data through the constructor call. So let's go back to the program.cs and see now we have a lot of errors. Let's start off by removing this information. We no, no longer need this information. Everything's going to go through the constructor. So now I'm trying to create an instance of student and it's giving me an error. It's saying that the student does not contain a constructor that takes zero arguments. 
And what, what that means is that in order to use this class, you need to give it a name, age, and final grade. Right now, I'm not giving it anything, so it's getting mad. This is how it controls the class. It makes sure that if you are a student, you must have a name, age, and final grade. So the way that we actually supply this information, we just pass it into its arguments list or its parameters right here inside of these parentheses. So the way we do that is just like how we do with any function call. I'm going to put in the information by separating them with commas. So the first thing is the name. So I'm going to say Tom for the first one, comma. And now you can see it's saying, okay, you need the name, age, and final grade. I'll say the age is... Um, 15 and the final grade is a 75 so now the constructor is happy and it's not complaining anymore Tom 1575 now the class has all the information it needs if I try to leave out the name it's gonna complain again it's saying you need to give me a name and that's good it's protecting our class making sure that you can't break the class anyway by doing it the proper way if you use constructors and handle it properly with properties and get in set functions you'll be safe your class will always be safe so let's go ahead and give some information for these other instances we'll say Fred 1590 and Ted 12 70 70 so now we have our three students and now it's not complaining anymore about the constructor. However, we're missing one more thing. We have this private data behind the scene that's holding the name, age, and final grade, which I should now make lowercase. This is just a convention, naming convention. And this is name over here. So now that I have this stuff, this information behind the scenes, and the user is giving me the information through the constructor, I'm missing one last step. I need to link them together. This information, it will get it from the user, but then once it does this, it won't do anything. It does nothing. It just, nothing. It just runs this code and then leaves. It never does anything. So when I try to go say hello, it's gonna say that the name is nothing because it never got linked between the constructor and to here. Watch, if I try to run this, watch what happens. It says, hello from, hello from, hello from blank. They're all blank because it's not linking. The information that gets into here is not being linked to the class itself. But it is getting into here. If I do in the, in the constructor and I print out name for all the users, now look, it says Tom, Fred, and Ted. So the, the information is getting into here, but then we're not doing anything with it. What we need to do is actually assign that value to the, the data that is for the class. So I'm going to say name equals name. Now we're going to run into a problem here, but let me just finish this. Age equals age and final grade equals final grade. What I'm trying to do is saying that this name equals this name, this age equals this age, and this final grade equals that final grade so that the information that's passed in gets assigned into here. That's what I'm trying to do. However, I'm running into a problem. The problem that I'm running into is that it can't differentiate between this name and this name. It's saying, which name are you talking about? What name should I assign to? So the way that I can fix this is by using the this reference. By adding this to the beginning of each, watch what happens. I'm going to say this.name, this.age, and this dot final grade. What that's doing is it's saying use this current instance's internal data. So by going this dot name, that directly means this name right here. It means this class's name. This age means this class's age. This final grade means this class's final grade. The, the what I'm doing this for is to help the the compiler differentiate between the 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 parameter name and the actual student's name. By doing this, now it knows exactly where to go. It's saying whatever information is coming into this constructor, assign that into the actual name of the student. So now the student's name is whatever they passed in. So once I do that, now my say hello function will work. So I run that and now it says hello from Tom, hello from Fred, hello from Ted. Using this constructor, I'm always protected. Now, anytime you say, say hello on a student, it will always print their name, 
properly because it, it forces you to enter in a name. You can't get around that anymore. So now we're sort of safe in that aspect. The last thing I want to talk about with constructors is constructor overloading or overloading constructors. And we've already seen method overloading, so it's not too much different than that. The, the general idea of overloading is the same. Now we're just overloading a constructor. So what I want to do is, right now my student requires a name, age, and final grade. However, what if there was a case where we don't have the final grades yet, but we still want to create a student? We need to give the user some kind of way that they can still create a, use, a student without having the final grades yet. So we can overload the constructor to have another version of it that it's just the name and age and the final grade is not needed in this case. So yes, we could make a default value because we went over that. I can say equals you know zero, that's a default value. So if you don't supply one, that will solve it. So we can do that, definitely. There's no problem with that. But instead of doing that, we could also, if we wanted to, do it a, an overload. So I'm going to say public student, oops, public student, string name, int age. So this version of the constructor only has a name and age, no final grade. And then I'll say this dot name equals name, this dot age equals age. So now I supplied a version that you can use without a final grade. For example, if I create a fourth student, student s4 equals new student now it's saying okay there's two versions of the constructor the first one is with string name int age and double final grade but if you don't have all that information there's another version that just takes in a name and an age alone so i can just do um frank and 10. and now it will also be happy and everything will be fine s4 say hello if I run that, now Frank will display also. So I provided another way to use this class if you don't have the final grade yet. However, there is one problem, and this is the last problem of this video. The problem is I see code duplication here. I see this.name equals name, this.age equals age, and then I see it here again. We are duplicating code here, and there's no point to do this. We can actually make this more efficient so we, that we don't have code duplication. So what we're going to use is a constructor initializer. Basically what it does, it, it allows us to call another constructor from a constructor. So because the code is duplicated, we can call this constructor from this constructor to save the code. All we have to do is supply it that default value. So the way we call this constructor is by using the this keyword again. At the end of this constructor, we're going to say this and then we're going to call the constructor that we want to call. So we want to call this one, and we're going to pass in the name, the age, and then for the final grade, since we don't have one, we'll pass in a default value of zero. And now we can, by doing that, remove this, and it will still work. If I call this constructor by passing in just a name and just an age, it will then call this constructor just forwarding the name and age and then passing in the zero for the final grade so that it always uses this constructor every single time. By doing this, we don't have to code duplicate anything in this constructor call. So we still have this constructor right here that's only using the name and age. So we can actually see it will still work. It will, when we call say hello, it will still print the name because it calls this constructor. Watch. And as you can see, it says hello from Frank. So we know it is this indeed this constructor is calling this constructor making this code more efficient.